Hi there, I'm Lena Anani, and you're listening to She Wrote a Book, where I interview amazing women from all over the world who also happen to be published authors. I created this show to educate, entertain, and inspire you to be the voice you want to hear in the world. Did you know this episode comes with a free gift? It's a webinar for aspiring authors who want to learn my insider secrets on writing and publishing books. You can access this free training instantly at shewroteabook.com slash bonus. Now let's get started. You are listening to episode number two of She Wrote a Book, and today I'm interviewing Don Casey Rowe, author of the book Don't Sniff the Glue, A Teacher's Misadventures in Education Reform. Education's in the middle of a national firestone. Don't Sniff the Glue, A Teacher's Misadventures in Education Reform is the hilarious story of one teacher working through idealism and red tape to teach the teens who will soon run the world. Don Casey Rowe is an author, educator, and blogger, and consultant currently living in Rhode Island with her family, dog, and chickens. She's passionate about teaching the things that unlock the potential of her students, which is why she takes on the issues of education reform. Again, her book is called Don't Sniff the Glue, A Teacher's Misadventures in Education Reform. You can find the link to purchase her book in our show notes for this episode at shewroteabook.com slash the number two. Well, awesome, Don. I can't wait to talk to you about your book. First of all, I really want to know what, okay, so so how did how did this whole book idea come about? What was it that inspired you to do this? Well, it was kind of a little bit backwards. I had a, a good friend who was a best-selling author, and he said, you know, you have to write for real. And so he helped me set, set up the blog and get all that stuff rolling. And then he said, well, okay, you got to write a book. Um, and, and I really didn't want to write about education. I kind of, I, everybody writes about education and, and then these stories just kept coming out and out and out. And I thought, now this is something I can get behind. And then I worked hard and and got this finished and out there. That's awesome. Really cool. So, so your, so your background is in in education. Um, were you a teacher? Who did you teach? What's your story? So I started in corporate. I was in insurance for a good decade. And then I heard this voice from the sky and I said, you, you have to leave and teach. And usually, you know, you don't hear voices in the sky without having some problems behind you or, you know, so I, I, I thought about it and I went back to grad school and I thought, you know, I I will teach. And when I went into teaching, I thought, you know, I'm going to save the universe and the world's going to be great. And we're all going to sit around talking about like, you know, founding fathers and Mozart and science and math and all these things that we love, you know, we're just going to just talk about this. And and that turned out not to be exactly what education was all about. So, you know, I had this, this moment of, of euphoria followed by this moment of disillusionment. And I thought, oh, well, yay. Uh, and, and in the middle of that, the kids are just amazing. They're just really looking for somebody to show them this, this stuff. Um, and so that's kind of where I was when I when I started writing. I was looking for people to to uh, to say, well, how do we get technology to kids? How do we get computers? How come they can't use their phones? All these questions that I I couldn't really articulate yet. Um, and then I ended up meeting the uh, the friend of mine who who made me promise to write this book. But he was in the middle of Silicon Valley, and so I ended up by default, you know, doing some jobs and working uh, for some just amazing people and teams in in tech and ed tech. Uh, and it kind of gave me that contrast. So that's sort of where I came from. Very cool. How old How old was the group of kids that you were teaching? I'm teaching at a Title I school, which is a, um, a high-need school. It's a career and technical school in Rhode Island. And they're anywhere from 15 to uh, uh, high school, so 9 to 12. Okay. Got it. Very cool. Very cool. Wow. Um, so I can actually kind of relate to that story. Um, I know this interview isn't about me, but I just want to quickly say that there was a stint in my life where I decided to, to drop my corporate life and pursue being a grade school teacher. And I did about a year's worth of student teaching. And I went into it with a big heart, ready to change the world, just like just like you did. And then when and it, and, and all of a sudden you get slapped with no child left behind. This was in California. And um, it's just it's all about standardized tests. It's all about numbers. It's all about the things that it's all about the things that kids could benefit from learning, but they need the benefit. They actually could benefit from learning a lot of other things, like you know, life skills. Or, or I have a friend who just did a TED talk on um, education reform, and and through the through the uh, 
through, through the emotion of curiosity. If we brought curiosity back into the classrooms, kids are more likely to learn, want to learn more about what's going on. What do you think about that curiosity as a as a learning tool. I think that's amazing because first of all, I mean, I'm not against the tests because, you know, in my day we didn't have video games. They hadn't been invented yet. So the only way you could prove that you were smarter than everyone around you was to nail that test. And it was like, you know, you against the world. What I'm uh, upset about is the excessiveness and the high stakes testing when we have all this technology to just micro test and, and know what these guys know immediately. Um, and, and so that kind of squashes the curiosity and makes them sort of really boring you know they, they're really bored and so um you know i'll come back and say well look at your art look at your music look at what you can do your writing and and since i've had that experience myself coming from zero knowledge of this world to being able to produce and release and get things out there there's no reason a 15 year old can't do the same things so you know i try and work with them on the side to, to get those things produced and real and out there um and then they love school. They, I, they're, they're like, whoa, miss. So, I mean, I got a round of applause because I told them I didn't care about their grades. You know, I've had straight F students that I would hire for my business. That's not what it's all about. It's about that curiosity and, and the ability to translate that to, to learn. Like it, if you can learn anything, you're, you're just amazing. So at a high school level, I think that's really easy to do. Elementary, I don't know. Like elementary kids are different creatures entirely. They're very, very clever I mean, I watch them, you know, do dance moves while they pick their nose. They have a lot of potential. They can do anything, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, you talked about high stakes testing for the benefit of the listener. Can you explain a little bit about what that is? Yeah. So that basically is, especially in certain states, we all need to make sure that everybody grows up really smart, you see. So what we do is we develop these tests. And then if you can take the test and achieve a certain proficiency, we think that you have done it and you have graduated to you. You can graduate and be qualified in life. Uh, but the problem is, is that they're not really they're not really fair. I mean, I work with people who speak two and three languages or ESL students, uh, English lang language learners. And they're not going to get the context or the nuance of a test. And then you get people who really just don't test well. I test well because I'm a nerd. That's what I'm all about. But that's an unfair advantage. I might not know the context, but uh, the the content, but I know how to do it. So I don't feel like it's a really great way to say you can graduate, but you can't. I think it's a good tool, but not you know with that high a uh, a stake. And uh, the teacher evaluation system is the same way. You know, the people come in and check the rubrics. And if you, you get this box, you're qualified to teach. If not, you should go to McDonald's and work. And, and it's just really a lot of pressure that to me is not very, uh, it doesn't indicate success. Right. So, so then what does indicate success? What does that look like to you? To me, I think it's somebody who just will, will go out of their way to learn anything and be dedicated to do anything. And, and they just, you know, you can't stop them or, or squash them in any way. And so when you get a kid and you tune them into their passion, then they'll do that. So I think the mistake is that, well, if you let them do their passion, you see, they're not going to do art or they're only going to do art and they're going to just write math off the planet. And that is not true. I mean, I... I think you just have to, There, it's like marketing. You have to let them buy into their passions. So if I say, well, you're a great artist, but I'm never going to pay you the right amount because you don't know math, they'll learn math. That, now you've given them a reason to know math and count their profits and, and, and raise their prices and A-B test their, their, uh, their websites and stuff. Um, if you just say, well, now we're going to calculate the area of a circle, why? Well, when will I use that? So you have to help them to buy into the higher level stuff. And, and you do that only with passion, I think. Absolutely, passion is huge. So, and you're clearly passionate about this topic, but, uh, but I am curious on a totally, it's kind of a tangent, don't sniff the glue, your title. How did you come up with that? You know, I, I think, I, and I was nervous about that title. I'm not going to lie. You know, that's, you know, you, you're like, oh, are you ever getting drug use? You know, uh, all these things. So. Uh, really, when you look at it, a whole lot of people are buying into education reform. And they're all, you know, it's it's our equivalent of drinking the grape Kool-Aid. So we're out there, we're like, yeah, 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 scores, achievement, ben, you know, all this stuff, all these buzzwords. Um, and, 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 and you can't buy into that. So uh, one day I was in the in the store and these two student teachers were looking at these glue bottles and and they're like, oh, we need, we can't find the glue we need. And and I was standing next to the Sears Tower of glue. It was five cents. It was those door busting glue. You know, if I took one out of the middle, the entire glue display would fall. 
Um, so I, I said to them, I said, well, there's some glue here. I, I mean, you couldn't miss this glue. And they said, no, no, no. She said, we need this glue. And, and she is that student teacher supervisor that hasn't been in the field for 20 years. I, you know, you, you've all, enc- you've encountered these people. And, and right. so, you know, she was telling these poor college people were probably going home splitting the last ramen noodle. And, and she's like making them buy $7 glue when there was five cent glue right there. So, you know, I just kind of felt bad for them. They had no authority over their life. And I said, listen, man, in a year, you're going to be, you're fine. Everything you do is fine. Don't let them keep you down buy the glue you want, you know? And, and so we had that conversation because I just wanted them to know that, to validate them, that they were right. And that this person telling them to do these things was just, you know, just that and to, to follow their instincts. So that's where the glue came from. That is, that's an interesting story. So where does the sniffing of the glue come? I like it because I, I like, you know, I've got that comedy background. So I, I think it's hilarious. It's a great title. It's very catchy, but, but it's just so funny. It's when you say don't sniff the glue, are you trying, I mean, is that, so, so that's, that's the message to teachers and students and even parents and administrators, I'm sure just don't drink the Kool-Aid. That's yeah. basically, I think that's our okay. equivalent because I mean, we don't get Kool-Aid anyway. They take that out of the school. So, um, you know, it's just, <laughs> just if, if, if that's our equivalent because you have to think, you have to really be able to advocate on your own or, or wonder about, is this system, the system that's working for me or my child or, you know, my students. And, and I think an awful lot of people are following that bandwagon for policies that have clearly been showing, uh, shown not to work. And we have the data behind that, but yet we're still all subjected, you know, to this thing. I mean, I'm watching the Red Sea of teachers depart because they're done with the bureaucracy. So we should ask ourselves, you know, are we in fact, you know, sniffing this glue? And if so, could could we not for a little while? Uh, Just for a little bit. Yeah. You know, moderation, everything in moderation. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> Just one sip of the gray Kool-Aid. That will do. <laughs> Exactly. All right. So, Don, when are you running for president? Oh, I am so <laughs> never running for president. No, because I've been really enjoying this election cycle. I have to be honest with you. It's, you know, even the kids, they, they're they buying into it, the theatrics, the, uh, you know, all these candidates. So I will not be one of those. I, I need to stand by the sidelines and mock things. I think that's what I do best. <laughs> mock things. Yeah. But at the same time, it sounds like you're also changing things from the inside out, which is incredible and awesome and I hope you keep doing it oh thank you I'll let you know when I supersize your fries if it worked out or not but, uh, but I'm doing <laughs> my best I have to be honest Lena so uh, I'm gonna try good good so what do you love most about being an author I love you know I I think is I went to a convention I went to um to uh, Bob McKee's story which was amazing it was just a transformational experience and he said something that I think a lot he said you know, if you just walk around telling people you want to write, then you're probably not going to going to do well at this. And I never, you know, I feel like I have to, like, I ha- like, it's almost tortured. It's, it's like these things are inside you and they have to come out. Uh, and they're always causing, you know, concern or fear. It's not like I just wake up in the morning and say, let me create some paragraphs. It's always something that's inside rattling around that has to come out. So I like being able to do that, but I also like when people respond and connect to that. So that's been my gift, I think, that the gift that came back to me. It's a beautiful gift, and thanks for sharing it, too. Um, Don, thank you so much for being our special guest today. We will have a link to your book in the show notes for this episode. Our listeners can find that at shewroteabook.com slash the number two to learn more about our author and her awesome book. Thanks again, Don. It's been great. Oh, thank you, Lena. Thank you for listening to She Wrote a Book. If you enjoyed this episode, then subscribe now so you can automatically get access to all new episodes and feel free to share your inspired thoughts with us in the comments too. I'd love to hear from you. Are you ready to write your own book? Get started now with my quick and concise webinar so you can learn my insider secrets on writing and publishing your own book. Claim your free gift now at shewroteabook.com slash bonus. Until then, may you always feel good and make magic. Feel good, make magic now. Lena Anani will show you how. Ignite that wisdom inside of you. And show the world what you do. To publish, write, and promote. Learn the best.